The US President Joe Biden's gone off script again over Russia, appearing to support regime change. However, the White House has been quick to clarify and walk back his comments. Take a look. Ukraine will never be a victory for Russia, for free people refused to live in a world of hopelessness and darkness. We will have a different future, a brighter future, rooted in democracy and principles, hope and light, of decency and dignity, of freedom and possibilities. For God's sake, this man cannot remain in power. Quite the change in approach from the United States. If, in fact, what the US president had said stood true and they stuck to it, which they haven't to discuss. And uh, now let's go to Otago University international relations expert, Professor Robert Patman. Good morning. Good morning, Ryan. Um, so they obviously walked this back. Um, how stupid a thing to say was that of Biden? I don't think it was stupid. Um, I think it was... A, it, this comment didn't come out of a clear blue sky. I mean, the, the person who's engaged in regime change uh, is Vladimir Putin, who has invaded a sovereign country and, and sought to decapitate the leader, democratically elected government of Mr. Uh, President Zelensky. And I think uh, it was against a backdrop in which Mr. Biden was expressing his frustration that the negotiations have not developed anywhere and that um, the, the, there are indications from Moscow of growing unrest with Mr. Putin. So I think, in a sense, he was really saying um, that he's not optimistic about negotiations and he thinks that the best way out of this is possibly to complete to keep supporting Ukraine and hope that Mr Putin has a change of mind or possibly someone else changes it for him in Moscow. Yeah but what the the words that he used though are important right the words yep. that he used were uh, cannot remain in power um, that would seem to indicate regime change would it not? Uh, it was certainly implied, and the, I think here also there's a bit of diplomatic signalling going on, uh, Ryan. We know that Mr Macron has been critical of uh, this suggestion, and indeed, as you indicate in your introductory remarks, the, the American State Department have been very careful to row it back a bit. But I think the message is that just depending on diplomacy alone, Mr Putin, doesn't work. After all... Mr. Macron spent hours, literally a five-hour meeting with Mr. Putin, and Mr. Putin subsequently invaded the country, promising he beforehand he would not. Yes, so, but, but the question is whether the language that he's using might actually inflame the situation further, calling him a butcher and whatnot. I know you need to call out, you know, um, alleged war crimes when you see them, but are you potentially inflaming a very volatile man who has his hand close to a nuclear weapon? Well, so far, the diplomatic language hasn't restrained him. He's escalated. Let's be quite clear what he's doing in the Ukraine. He's launching missile strikes and shelling on civilian areas. And to some extent, he's claiming outlandishly that the Ukrainians are doing this themselves. So I think it's against that backdrop that Mr. You know, uh, Mr. Biden expressed his frustration. I think he is signaling to the Russians they're not going to be tiptoeing around them anymore. They've invaded, illegally invaded a country and they can't expect to be treated with all the diplomatic niceties that is normally accorded to a head of state. That's probably fair enough. International relations expert Professor Robert Patman, thanks so much for your time this morning. Really Thank appreciate you. it. 24 minutes after 7 o'clock now.